We walk into the shop and he doesn't even greet me. He looks at me, but he doesn't say a word. And I still said to Norman, I don't know what's going on now, but this man is not himself. He's not as friendly as usual. Anyway, nevertheless, we went, we got the pie. Then when we went to go and pay, then I looked at him like that, but he still couldn't make eye contact. And I knew something was wrong. And I said to him, hi, how are you? And he said, good. And I said, um, do you remember this is Norman? And then he was quiet, had this confused look on his face. And he said to me, um, yeah. And then after a while, I said to him, this is Norman, the guy that weighed 297 kilos. Norman and Milani, uh, thank you so much for uh, talking to me again. I've interviewed Norman and Milani now um, a few months ago. Um, the, the link is um, on my YouTube channel. And at that stage, Norman lost 100 kilos. But Norman, now you've lost quite a lot more. Uh, uh, what is the current figures? Where are you at? Okay, I just want to say to hi to everyone that is listening. And um, yeah, I lost now um, until this morning 158 kilos. This so, is yeah. amazing. This is amazing. And just tell uh, the audience um, what was your initial weight? What was the most that you weighed? Yeah, I started, uh, okay, my weight was 297 kilos. That was, okay. yeah, that's when I started in 2015, before I got bedridden, um, I was 257 kilos. 297. Ah, 297, <laughs> sorry. 297. Yes. Yeah, 297. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a long time. But we'll, we'll go more into the details because I would like for you and Milani to tell us about your journey a little bit later on. But Milani, you also have a, a testimony and uh, first of all thank you for your support for uh, Norman and we're going to talk about that a little bit later on and you've got advice that you can perhaps give to people that are in similar circumstances but uh, you achieved your own goals with the keto diet um, how much weight did you lose Milani? Um, it's about 40 kilos 40 kilos and over what uh, time frame did you lose that? Um, it was about, I would say, uh, just over three months. But then after that, it was the maintenance. So I'm still in maintenance at the moment. Yes. And that's that's also thanks, something that we, we will discuss a little bit later on. Um, both the carnivore diet and keto diet, we, and I think you'll agree with me, we should look at it as, as a, on a long-term basis, not on a short, uh, quick fix lose a, a couple of kilos basis. I, I don't know if you agree with me on that. Yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. All right. So, but I, before we start with asking questions, there, there's one thing that I just want to clear up because I think we often miss it. I think both of you reversed your high glucose levels. With other words, your type 2 diabetes uh, with the keto diet. And uh, I know, Norman, you started to do the carnivore diet. I don't know... Did your blood sugar go down when you did the carnivore diet? Or what was it on the highest and how quickly did it change for you? Yes, my my sugar levels was about 34 and sometimes on the machine it actually showed high. high uh, because the highest it can go on my machine was 34. And I started the, the, the carnivore. I did the carnivore actually for uh, one month, just over one month. And my um, sugar levels went down almost like seven to eight. Um, on the, in that month's time on the carnival sure. so uh, the carnival is actually like like I said to Milani it's easier to do the carnival actually than the keto but the thing is with, with keto if you do keto you have to prep your meals I think it's like more to um, you know carnival you can make your, your meat um, quite fast in the pan or something quick like um, that's why I prep my meals for my keto because it takes a little bit longer but then if you that, 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 that's why I say for me, it's um, you must do your prep for keto so that you have your meals already for the week or two weeks. Okay. And what is your blood sugar levels now, Norman, if I may ask? Okay, this morning it was 4.2. 4.2. Wonderful. Yes. And, and Milani, you also had high sugar levels uh, when before you started keto, or was your, what, what, what was your situation it with? Yes, it was also high. It wasn't as high as Norman's. Um, yes. I think it comes with the overweight as well. So it was like yes. pre-diabetic. So it was between ah. eight and nine. 
And okay. it's also now sometimes it's 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 still in the fives, but normally like four point eight to five. Yes, yes. Um, and I, um, Thomas, I just want to mention mm -hmm. my sugar levels was like thirty four. That was when I already was taken one hundred and sixty milligrams of diglycide, and I was I was taken two thousand milligrams of glucophates every night. So and, that and was still the, the sugar levels were so and high. It was still it was still high like that with that medication that I took. It's incredible. Um, I had an interesting discussion with a vegan <laughs> on Twitter, um, and he say, "Yeah, but you can reverse uh, um, diabetes type two diabetes with any diet. Uh, you can do it with or, or with many diets. You can do it with many diets, and and there's truth in it. If you don't eat, you know." Um, your blood sugar will go down, but you eventually have to eat something, and that is yeah. the problem. Um, you still have to cut out sugars. The, yeah, but what but what I say is like with the vegan diet, for instance, you can reverse type two diabetes if you do it in a low carbohydrate fashion and you cut out all uh, seed oils. But like I told the vegan guy, because he was arguing with me, I I told him you have to eat. Uh, fats eventually you, you cannot not eat fats but plant fats is not the same as animal fats and i think that's why we have this discussion that and because one of the questions that i want to ask you later on is about how sustainable do you think is this lifestyle be it keto or be it carnivore do you think you can do it for a long term but i'll ask that question a little bit later on um i first want you to to tell us um your journey, how did it start? Um, my question is, how did you lose the 158 kilos? Give us a time yeah, frame. It's still unbelievable. I lost the 158 kilos in 13 months. So I started like uh, last year, in the end of September last year, I started with the keto diet. And I said to Melania, when we uh, finished day one, how am I going to do this? It was, I thought, I won't be able to do it in long term. But as we started the keto diet, like the fats, because it's like high fat, it's like 90% fat, it's 6% um, protein and like 4% carbs. And like the fat, later on when I started, I, eat, I ate like three meals a day. And later on, you keep so full. So I started to do like two meals. And sometimes I do like OMAD because the fat in the meats, Keep you full. You don't have to eat like every hour, every two hours. So um, the keto is genuine working for us. And yeah, we do it like sometimes, like you said, a little bit of carbs, 10 to 20 grams of carbs. And sometimes if you don't want to eat carbs, we only eat the meat or chicken or um, pork. But yeah, yes. it's definitely sustainable. And yeah, I'm doing it now for 13 months. 13 months. So in 13 months, you lost 158 kilos. 158 kilos, yes. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> but, but, but sometimes, it's, it's, a, it's like sometimes I lose like in a month's time, maybe three, four kilos. And then the, 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 another, the month after that, it's like maybe 15 kilos. It, it depends on how it works. It's are you, yes. um, yeah. So yeah, sometimes I worry I just lost maybe four kilos in a month's time or maybe. Yes. And then the, the next month, it's just like going easy. It's true. And like I always say, Norman, just for the um, for the benefit of the audience, is that the bathroom scale measure water weight, it measure inflammation yeah. weight, it measure bone weight, it measure fat weight, it muscle weight, all this all these different kinds of metrics. And there's many things happen simultaneously. You know, for instance, many people start to go to the gym and now suddenly the bathroom scale does not move or even pick up a little, but yeah. they are building muscle and the inflammation is going away and their centimeters are going away. Yeah, that's definitely what happened to me. Yeah, and, and, and like I always say, Norman, the, your body don't care about how much you weigh. Your, your body does not understand that, your, but your body does know how you feel. Your body does know how your blood circulation is or how your heart is or how your hormones are. And all these other metrics and your blood sugar levels and all those things are important to your body. Not the a number on a on a bathroom scale, but that's not even matter. At the last yeah. two months, when I, I, I weighed myself, sometimes I was disappointed, and the people was just saying, "But 
it looks like he lost a lot more weight. It looks like so. I think it's centimeters that I also lost a lot the last two three months because everybody was yeah. stopping me and say, "But you look good. You, it looks like you have lost a lot of weight again." So I lost a lot of. I didn't even measure how much centimeters, but three four months ago it was over two two meters that I've lost in centimeters. So yeah. in the whole of my body. Yeah. So yeah, I still got the measurement somewhere, but yeah, I will put it on TikTok. <laughs> She's <laughs> amazing. And it Malami was a nurse Allen? that was measuring the, the yeah, it measurements. So it's two yes, centimeters. Yes. Uh, Milani, I would I would like to ask you what, what is your opinion on um, the carnival diet versus the keto diet? Um I'm a lover of meat myself, so I would easily be able to do the carnivore diet anyway. Yes. Um I think the carnivore diet is it's an easy diet to follow. I think it has very good results, yes. and the, the same with the keto. And uh, people sometimes do tend to think that the keto or the carnivore diet is an expensive diet. But I disagree with that because if you prep your meals beforehand, then it's it's not an expensive diet or lifestyle to follow at all. I mean, yes. for ourselves in our own um, household, we've tried many diets before, and at the end of the day, you waste a lot of money on this supplement and this tablet and this, and it doesn't work. It doesn't last because it doesn't become a lifestyle. So in my personal opinion, um, the carnivore and the keto diets, I think those two are, they will go well together. And whether you do the one or the other, um, I yes. think those two are the best to, to, to follow because they're sustainable. Yes, you get yes, everything yes. that you need whether it's carnivore or the keto, everything that you need is in there. Yeah. That's right. And, and you can do it for a long term. And there's, yeah. there's another question but that I, I wanted to ask it later, but I'm, I'm going to put it in here. Um, there's a wrong way to do keto as well, just as there's a wrong way to do carnivore. Um, yes. But I think with keto, because of the different um, things that you can add and can can you talk a little bit about that? What is your opinion about doing it wrong? I'm gonna I'm gonna start, then you can finish. <laughs> um, I think with the you get the clean keto and you get the dirty keto. So okay. we prefer the clean keto because it's also a mind thing. Once you start adding things to your diet, then your body seems to think it's okay to have a little bit more carbs here, have a little bit more processed food here, and it's not. Because it then it kicks you out of ketosis in the first place. Then you will not be using your own, you know, the dietary fat or the um, or the, the fat from the food, or your own fat, in, in fact, um, to burn for fuel. So stay away from anything that's not supposed to be in the diet. Because, like I said, well, for us, it was a mind thing. You need to get your mind right. And it start, as soon as you start adding things or add eating more than what you're supposed to, I think that kind of affects your weight loss and it, it affects the way that you think. So you mm. think it's okay to have a little bit more of this or let's do a dirty keto for a week and see how it goes. No, it's not because then you're eating more carbs, you're eating processed foods and it doesn't work. Yes. And I, I, I just want to think, uh, with that, a lot of people asking um, Kubis, um about if you have a, go a gallbladder. And Milani doesn't have a gallbladder, and she's doing the keto, and she did the carnivore as well, and she didn't have any problems. And she's, like I said, she doesn't have a gallbladder, because I, I know a lot of people are asking um, Kubis about the, if you have not a gallbladder, can you go on with the keto and carnivore diet? Yes, you can. Like I said, she has no problems at all. So um, yeah. I, I actually use so much uh, uh, real butter. It's quite scary because I live for things like that. I, I, I mean, I, everything that I use, I use my the, the, the butter, the butter. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll eat teaspoons of that as well because, and I mean, I have yeah. no gallbladder and I don't feel sick. I don't, yes. there's no pressure on my other organs, nothing. So I did yeah. actually, in fact, when I started keto, I did not even have keto flu. Nothing. I, wow, that's, that's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, and ju just to to summarize that up, um, your liver actually produces gall, uh, and there's a structure that runs from the liver directly into the stomach, and that actually takes over 
the gallbladder function. So yes, absolutely. There are many people like yourself that can do keto and carnivore without a gallbladder, but thanks Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. Yes. No, um, I, but I just wanted to add, Norman, um, to this uh, discussion about the keto, uh, dirty keto and so forth. You know, just because it says keto on the box or on the snack does not make it keto. <laughs> you no, know, uh, because they play, they play around with numbers and it's all a marketing thing. You know, the, these food companies saw a gap in the market and now they're selling keto puddings and and all of those things. And at the end of the day, you can fall into a trap. And I think that that's why I ask this question. Uh, if you want to do keto, you, you better do it the right way. Carnivore is, you, it, it's very hard to do carnivore wrong. You know, what can you really do wrong except for eat processed meat maybe and maybe sugary yeah, sauces? Yeah. yeah, you know, but but uh, I think in keto, you have to, um, you have to do it in the right fashion. We definitely Otherwise, learn how to read labels. I was just going to say that. That is <laughs> the thing that we learned in this whole keto process. Because you can check this anti-caking agent, yeast, the seed oils, all everything, the different, all the different sugars. Yeah, they put different names for sugars. And that is the one thing. That's why normally we also like stick to just that plain stuff. We don't go and buy the... I don't want to put names out there, but I don't, we don't go and buy some spices with names on and like that. We, we try to just the pepper and the salt and we try yeah, to yeah. use the, the natural stuff. If you do meat, just black pepper and salt. If you do like vegetables, um, cauliflower or something like that, we put salt and pepper. So we, we try not to use sources, the, the low carb and smart carb uh, sources and stuff because you don't know actually what is in that. So we try actually, it's, it's, it's almost like the carnival. We don't eat, the, uh, we do eat carbs, but we don't eat the meat and put all the sauces up, uh, low carb sauces and low carb spices. Mm. We try to keep it as simple as possible. And once again, once yeah. you start eating those things, it's a mind thing. So it's okay to have it once. It's okay to have it twice. And then yeah. you don't understand why your body is craving carbs or craving the sugar again, mm. because I'm not taking any sugar in because the label says it doesn't. Yeah, I can actually think in my in my 13 months, I think I cheated like five times. And sometimes it was just more meat. But I, I did uh, like I had a, a Coke light. And that's the thing. I had one Coke light. And then the next day you urge it. So that's why I stopped it. And I only drink now the black coffee and the water because you urge uh, Coke light. You urge that um, something else if you yeah. just started it. So it's better not to do it and try to just stick with your diet. If I yes, may yes. add, the, the mm -hmm. one day we went to a shop and we felt like, I felt like something different to drink instead of just, I drink sparkling water, I prefer the carbonated water, um, but there was aloe water and it was a, a, a well-known brand and it said sugar-free on the label in the front. I bought it, I brought it home and then Norman read the label at the back, it had something like 8.6 grams of sugar. sugar. So what they do is they say sugar-free, but in very small print, they say no added sugar. Yeah. So you don't read the very fine print. You just see no sugar. It's okay to, to drink it or to eat it. But no, it's not. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, I want to move on to the next question. Um, Milani, you can also come in here. Um, tell us about your challenges. And I know uh, me and Norman talk a lot, but... For the benefit of the audience and maybe for people that are in a similar position than you, it, it must have not been easy to, uh, there, there must have been challenges. Can you tell us about what challenges you experience in your weight loss journey? Uh, if I started before my weight loss journey, people was looking at me like they were laughing. They were talking about me when I was in the walking in the streets, when I sat in the car, I was sitting at Uno. Like full in the Uno. So <laughs> that is the thing. So people was judging me. People was laughing at me. When I started this journey, I was seven years bedridden. Or six and a half years bedridden when I started my journey. So for when I started my journey, I was actually still bedridden for six, seven years before I, uh, six, seven months before I stand it up. So actually when I started to go out and I could walk a little bit with the walker outside, that was always in my mind. Someone is looking at me. Someone is maybe laughing. Are they looking at me in the car? And 
that is the thing that I, that is struggling. That's why I had anxiety because that's still in my mind when I go out is what people is judging me for who I was. And it's it's time that I must accept that I'm trying my best to lose the weight. I did a lot. I'm not, I'm not the way I want to be, but I must really start to accept who I am and don't let people worry me because that is the thing that is difficult when I go out and um, I'm always looking around, it. are they judging me? Are they looking at me? And that is the thing that I must, yeah. You know, and it's getting better, but yeah, it's like I'm now six months that I'm like, can go out in the public and go for a walk at the beach. And it's like amazing just to be with my family, to go out and people actually talking to me again. You know, people are making okay. a conversation. They stop me when I'm at the gym, um, at the um, sea point, they come to me, people with muscles come to me, say I'm a, like an inspiration for them. And they want to take a photo. They want to, yeah, and there's a lot of people that I don't even need, know that is now on my WhatsApp. People that I met like in in Seapoint where we were jamming, where we were walking, and they want to see my journey and they are connecting with me on WhatsApp. They are just awesome, the people now outside there. And also on TikTok. People on yeah. TikTok is like supporting me. I think I've got like two, three bad messages in a whole year. So for me, it's just... To, the thing for me is just to show people there is still hope. There's maybe people that wasn't bedridden. There's maybe people that have other disabilities that can learn from this. And I just want to help them. That's why I did the, the U magazine. That's why I did the News 24. That's why I did the Heisgenoot. Not for money, not for publicity, for people out there that's in the same position. I know I, how I felt when I was lay, lying on the bed for six and a half years. So for me, it's just to get the message out there before they... For, for people to know there is still hope. Yes, absolutely. And um, if I if I may, ahead. sorry. Yes, yes. Um, one of I think what also a, a challenge was was getting clothing when you are, you know, quite a big size. I mean, I'm gonna say it like it was. Yeah. <laughs> he used to wear a 10 XL pants and his shirt. I mean, you're having to go to clothing places where they they rip you off because it's bigger size clothing so the bigger the size the more expensive it is yeah. so your clothing is also limited when you are on a overweight or obese like norman was and i think he will he still sometimes he struggles to accept the fact that he has lost all this weight if it weren't for the clothing that he wears now the yeah. sizes i don't think that he because he still sometimes Tells me, but he, he's not sure. Has he really lost all the weight? But I mean, this pants is a 2XL. This shirt is a yeah. 3XL. And so actually, if I go smaller now, I can't buy a them anymore. So they're going to lose my money. Now. He's not a customer anymore. Yeah, they said to me they only go about two, from 2X. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's, one, uh, there's one story that I want to get to, and that is. How did you uh, get to go to church again? Tell, tell us that story. That is a beautiful story. Um, Kubis, actually, the, um, our Dumini, he was supporting us the whole way when I was bedridden for six years. He was like every month he came here, he talked to us. And I all, when I started my journey, I told him I will come to church one day. And when I started now, I actually, when I started, I couldn't start to walk. So I just stand up at the bed and the window I had to um, grab something there and just try to stand up. And that's how I started to walk. I couldn't walk. So I only stand up for like a month's time. And later on, I could try like um, two, three steps with the walker. And then I found him and I asked him, you know, um, where's the easiest way for me to get to, into church? So there was a long way that you could walk up like an uphill to go in there's no steps but it's like was like a long way or the other one was like five six steps and then you are in the church so actually me and my wife went like for a month or two with the, when i actually used the walker we went with the car and i actually tried to with the walker get up to the steps every um two three times a week and with the um so eventually a month ago i, I could go into the church without a walker and get up the steps and i was last weekend also in church so yeah 
we had to practice to go to church. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> the Dumini, yeah, he was so he was so with that. He, he actually on the WhatsApp he said to me, I'm the first guy that actually exercised that he can say that exercise to get into church. <laughs> <laughs> so that was an amazing video. And if anybody see this uh, video, you must go to Norman Nell's and, and Milani Nell's uh, TikTok channel and follow them. And that video where uh, the Dominic actually uh, made uh, a speech for um, for Norman. And Norman was walking there and, and he was telling everybody what Norman just told us. It's amazing. Yeah. That was so they, they, inspiring. They had a five kilometer walk. I could actually, but only for one hour. So I could, I managed to walk 3.6 kilos in an hour. So I couldn't finish it. But for me, it's like something you big. Were winning. Yeah. yeah, of course. That is, this is amazing. Maloney, what is the secret to help a loved one that have a weight loss journey ahead of them? In my personal experience, Corbus, I would say is to, first of all, not judge the other person. Then, secondly, if it's possible, in our case, it, it, it is possible and it worked like a bomb because we did it as a team. We teamed up, we got the family involved, and we did it together. So if the one is having a bad day, the other one would lift the other one up. You would initiate, let's go for a walk. Although you don't feel like that walk, let's just do it. And because Norman does all the prep work in the house, I'm not a cook at all, so he does all the food then um, we would do everything together as a family. So I think that helped us. And I'm sure um, instead of just rooting from the sideline, get involved, support each other, and love each other along the way. Make it a fun journey. Don't just concentrate on the kilos or the centimeters that you want to lose. Get to know each other again. I mean, through good times and bad times. Just make it work because it can work if you do it together. Instead of just judging or, you know, not trying to support each other, just get in there and support each other. That's what happened to us. And before we did, many times we tried to, yeah. to we've done it how many times? But because we were not supporting each other and we were not doing it together, it failed every single time. Yes, that was the one problem because when I was on a diet, maybe a month's time and then, I give up because if they eat something wrong, a burger or something, then I gave up. So that was the whole thing. I just want to put it out there. It wasn't like I was just doing now this keto and I lost it. I tried 10, 20 times before this, before keto, before carnivore. I tried every diet. I tried uh, um, diet uh, tablets. And Boy. dear of mine, I tried all that. Dear of mine didn't work for me. Actually, just my high blood pressure was like yeah. in high sky. So, and actually, after I, I finished with that tablets, you gained all the weight. So, this was the first time I actually we, we um, decided that it's like a lifestyle. Yeah. And that is what made the difference. And mm. if you pick up a kilo or two, you just go on, you know, you, you must just trust the system and you must just go on. And people mm. must just remember, if you do the carnivore, do the carnivore. Don't, yeah. don't do the carnivore and put onions and put all the stuff you think and drink coke and drink alcohol and think now okay this carnival was not working for me it's not it, working because you're yeah, doing it wrong you're doing it wrong you, you can't say it's a carnival diet if you don't do it 100 percent. you can't say it's the keto diet if you don't do it 100 percent. if you do it 100 percent, i can promise you the carnival keto banting will work and teamwork is dream work yeah you've got to do it yes. together um, Milani, yes and thank you Thank you for supporting um, Norman. And you, you hit the nail on the head there because I see it often where there is not a support structure and there's not support from the spouse and then it can be difficult. So, uh, but I think if you cross that bridge where you see, uh, like Norman said before, he actually did not have a choice. Yeah, he, he, was he, he knew he, he was going to be gone. He, he will die if, he's, if he does not do change uh, something. And I think, Milani, you also realized it's, it's, it's yeah. life or death. We have, to, yes. <laughs> we have to be serious about this. And that's the problem that I experience in my uh, coaching is I see that sometimes people, you want it more for them than they want it for themselves. They are not serious. Yeah. Um, 
and, and that brings me to my next question, Norman. Please tell me about your experience helping other people. Um, Kobus, I'm trying my best. There's a lot of people, a lot of people inboxing me, a lot of people asking for help, and I do, and I do it for free. I don't want anything. If I can save someone's life, if I can save someone becoming bedridden, there's now people, I was 297. There wasn't a lot of people that was heavier than me that I know of in the Western Cape of wherever. And now actually there's people that is now weighing more than me. And not, I'm not judging them. And that's why I want to help them, because I don't want them to be on the bed. I can just thank God, I can thank my, my family for helping me to get out of the bed. My doctor actually said to me, he's taking his hat off for me, because there is not a lot of people. That like, it's like six and a half years bedridden, and then decided, I must change my life now. And now walking, I went to his office, doctor's offices, he, was, he, he can't believe how I can now climb up the steps on the bed and now I'm moving now without any help. He, he, he can't believe it. Mm. And he actually was in the beginning not a, a huge fan of um, keto and I like changed him in that because he lo now last time I had to do a little bit of um, low fat diet when I had gallstones and mm. actually I did some recipes on the Google and it helped me a lot with the gallstones but um, and then he said now two three weeks ago Again, I must go with the keto again. And now he was the one that actually in the, in the beginning didn't want me to do keto or carnival. And now he's actually supporting me. And he couldn't believe now I'm not using any blood um, pressure medication. I'm not using any diglycide. I'm not using any glucophates. And I used to like use 2000 milligrams. I'm not using the only medication. I have a little bit of anxiety that I uh, um, use medication now for, but I only use now half of what I used to. But it's because I'm getting out in the public now. I said, I, when I'm in the church, there's a lot of people. I'm not used to it because I was on bed. People didn't come and visit us when I was bedridden. Not much. So I was like, you know, for me to go up in, out in the public was like difficult. I remember the first time Norman stepped out of this house. In six and a half years of being on the bed, um, Kobus, it was a nightmare. He didn't want to. He he was, but I can un also understand where he was coming from because we've just come through COVID. I mean, COVID was is a real disease, and COVID was a a scary part of of life. But um, he wouldn't go anywhere without his mask, and then eventually I had to get him to leave the mask at home because he was the only one in Cape Town still wearing a mask because he was just so petrified of everything and everyone. Yeah, and of people. But he so. also, which I, that's why I say I do understand, he didn't have much of an immune system either because he was only exposed to myself and Michaela's germs, I almost want to say, that we bring in the house. And I mean, outside there's lots of and they was, unknown. They were so laughing at me because my skin was like white because I was in the house. Now I'm actually <laughs> more tanned than them. And yeah, so yeah. Um, Norman, tell me, how important is exercise in weight loss for you? Um, Kubis, that was very important because like I said, when I started my journey, I couldn't walk. I couldn't even stand up. So she helped me and my daughter helped me just in the beginning to, to pick up my legs, try to help me to sit and to move my arms, just maybe making circles, then just put my legs up for one minute or two minutes. So in the beginning, it was actually so important because that was the only way that I got to uh, for blood circulation. I actually had the, uh, this crazy fit machine that she put with, um, just near the bed and I just put my legs on the machine as well just to get the blood flowing to get the blood circulation so now i can walk i still do exercise but yeah for the beginning i think it was very important just to burn some uh, calories and burn yeah just with, like because i couldn't walk mm. yeah that's, that's amazing um like i always say if you exercise that's one of the only times that your muscles don't need insulin to utilize and open um, for glucose, um, wow. you know, so you don't need insulin. So that helps with insulin resistance as well. So if you can exercise, but sometimes people are in a situation that they can't really exercise. Uh, and if they do the carnivore diet right or the keto diet right, they, they can still lose weight. But exercise, yeah. if you can do it, is absolutely beneficial. And I was a lot of weight. 
when I couldn't exercise. Uh, so I still yes. lost every week weight when I didn't, in the beginning, exercise. I still mm. lost uh, about two kilos every week. And I didn't yeah. even do exercises. But now we are fortunate. Um, we don't have to, have to go to the gym. We go to Sea Point. They have the gym equipment there at the sea. And they, for, the for, us, yeah, for us, it's so nice to just go on weekends and do it, go for a walk and go and do a little bit of exercise. And I don't worry if people are watching me anymore. It's not, yeah, yes. people like Um Kubis, a lot of people just encourage me. I, do, I didn't, I, uh, yeah, I would have had this interview with Um Kubis if it wasn't for you. I didn't, wouldn't have my TikTok account if it wasn't for this. My story would never be on TikTok and Um Kubis knows that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, thank you, Norman. Um, that is a great compliment and I, I appreciate your friendship. And like I said in that WhatsApp, uh, I said, do you remember the time that you uh, refused to make any videos or anything, not even a photo, nothing? <laughs> you yeah. said yeah, you remember that time. If I, and, uh, if I, sorry, if I may just also say something. A very mm. positive thing that came out of this whole situation was it was a... It was a very serious point, and it was a very. Um, sometimes it hurt quite badly because profile photos, Facebook photos, it was never allowed to be posted. It, it was never allowed. To, there was no family photos ever, and now all that we do is we take yeah. photos that we post yeah, I, because I, I it's a happy them, moment. I wouldn't now. let them take a photo of me. I was embarrassed. And Um Kubis, yeah. now when Um Kubis asked me for the first interview, I think it took months before I actually did the interview. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, everything has changed. And uh, that's why I said for the, better. for the better. And just to help people out there, the same mm. that Um Kubis are doing for people. Um, um Kubis isn't doing for it for views, for followers, for anything else, just to help people. And that's the same that I am doing. And, yeah, mm. I just, really appreciate it. I think sometimes people are just impatient with a new lifestyle as well. They don't want to, they want to take the chance, but they want easy results and quick results. Yeah. And that's not something that's going to happen in a week or two. You need yeah. to let yeah. the system work for itself. And we have a it lot of work. people that had messaged my wife and said, yeah, they are, they are sure that I had to bypass. I didn't have no bypass. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to make it clear outside. It was like putting in the, um, the exercise. All the hard work. I was walking in the rain with a walker. I was not feeling good. I was sick. I was had gallstones and still in the rain I was walking. Still every day when I could stand up, I was trying to stand up, do my exercises. So I can promise everybody out there that there was no bypass done on myself. Outside for the people there is that they must just start. If they feel, if they don't, just start with this diet and just give it a chance. Give the carnivore a chance. Give the keto a chance and just keep doing it. If you have, um, if your sugar levels, if you are diabetic too, if you try this this diet and you yeah. just do it for two, three weeks and just check it, do it like 100%. Don't cheat on mm -hmm. the carnivore diet or don't cheat on the keto. If you don't have results in that two, three weeks, better results, then go, then don't believe us and go on with your journey and try another diet. But I can assure you, if you do it for two, three weeks or a month and you're doing it 100%, you will definitely see some changes in, uh, changes in your sugar levels, in your health. You will have more energy. You will. It's amazing what will be become. And you will see that in a, in a, in a month's time. So yeah. that's all. That, they must just try it and they will see it will work. Absolutely. I just want to finish on the um, confidence point, and I want to congratulate the both of you, um, but especially Norman. Um, it was amazing to see your progress, uh, not only in the weight, of course, in the weight as well, but but the confidence side. Like I said earlier, uh, how you started to actually uh, help people, and and like I explained to you many times, and I know you know this, and you you believe it as well, that you are helping other people, and you've just said it uh, just a while ago. You, you are helping other people, and this is the reason why we do this live. That's the only reason why we are recording this. We are helping other people, and uh, Norman, and you, you, you are going to see people, and, I, and I'm sure you see people already that you are helping that are benefiting from your advice, and that 
uh, brings me to the next question. What are your future plans? <laughs> so is there a book that will be written? Uh, well, Kubis, there was a lot of people. There was actually a guy that also do diets and stuff. It also said mm. to me that um, I must do a book, I must write a book, and I must help people. Mm. So it's definitely in the future for mm. to do that. But on this, in this stage, I just want to help people. I don't want to make any money. I don't want to do stuff. I just want to help people where I can. And that's what I'm doing on WhatsApp daily when I'm at home, is helping people. People don't know actually how many people are asking me for help, how many people in TikTok, on Facebook are actually helping me and a yes. lot of people in this week alone messaged me and said to me they lost five kilos they lost six kilos already in, in maybe it's a week or two weeks time and mm -hmm. I, I'm, there's people that i'm um, helping for a longer stage than that and just that for me is like giving back to me because i can okay there is some people that that question me the whole time and said no but they think i'm starving myself or i'm doing this or i'm doing that but I'm doing it now for 13 months and it's working for me. Mm. So just try it. And what, what I'm saying, you, you can't expect in like one day to lose the weight. So my thing is people, yeah, there is some people, but there is a lot of people that is doing good. And I'm, mm. yeah, I'm um, so glad about that. And they are, so uh, there was uh, actually one guy that lost about 20 kilos wow. um, from, from seeing my videos. There was a guy that lost more. And he said it's from seeing my videos and from the um, motivation I give him. So for me, it's it's a lot. Yeah. It's giving back. Uh, absolutely, uh, Norman. And one thing that I would just like to remind both of you is that you, you can't help everybody uh, because like you, you know, there, there are some people that they just want to waste your time and, yes. <laughs> and some people just want to bully you. But there are those guys, like those people that you already helped. And that is the reason why you must persist past uh, any rejection, past any guys that are perhaps wasting your energy and try not to waste your energy on, on those. Focus on the guys that, that want to be helped. But that's, yeah. that's amazing, man. Um, listen, next question. Tell, tell uh, Milani, you can also answer. Um, tell us about your experience before and after the weight loss, especially there's one story that you told me um, what happened. <laughs> Yeah, she can tell that story. <laughs> okay, so obviously with Norman being bedridden for such a long time, whenever we go to the shops, it would always just be Michaela and myself or just me. So the people get to know you. We Cape Tonians are friendly people, so we always have a small chat. But there's this one man in particular that um, not – too far from us, but they have like a pastry shop. And we would always stop there because that was one of our emotional eating things was a pastry, but it's like a pie. But um, so then we would stop there, but Norman would never get out of the car, obviously, because first of all, it, it was a little distance to walk and he was too ashamed to go into the pie shop. I was good 97 kilos on yes. that. Yes. So, and, and you know, the struggle to get in and out of the car was a mission. So then he would sit in the car and this man would always obviously see him through the window when we're paying for the groceries bought. So for a few years, we've been going there with or without Norman being in the car or not being there at all. And in the, um, over the Friday, yeah, but the he, Friday. He, he knew that I was busy. Yes, he knew that Norman, but then after a while, um, he also asked me that he doesn't see Norman anymore. So I said, no, but he's become uh, bedridden, so he can't walk anymore. So it's much more difficult now, and so we come alone. So then the one day he actually prayed for me inside the store as well. He's a very Christian guy, and he prayed for us in there for better health, etc. cetera. Um, and then earlier this week, we stopped there again. So it was Norman, myself, and Michaela. But this time, we didn't stop there to buy a pie or a pastry for us. We stopped there to buy for Michaela. And I, he, I said to Norman, get out of the car and walk with me because this guy is going to get the shock of his life. So then we got out of the car. And when we walked in, this man would always ask me, how are you? And he would always be so friendly. How are you doing? How's Norman doing? Et cetera. But this time around, we walk into the shop and he doesn't even greet me. He looks at me, but he doesn't say a word. And I still said to Norman, I don't know what's going on now, but 
this man is not himself. He's not as friendly as usual. Anyway, nevertheless, we went, we got the pie. Then when we went to go and pay, then I looked at him like that, but he still couldn't make eye contact. And I knew something was wrong. And I said to him, hi, how are you? And he said, good. And I said, um, do you remember this is Norman? And then he was quiet, had this confused look on his face. And he said to me, um, yeah. And then after a while, I said to him, this is Norman, the guy that weighed 297 kilos. And he looked, but his face said everything. And then afterwards, we had a chuckle. And he said to me that he didn't want to say anything or start a conversation because he thought Norman has died in the meantime because he knew at what risk Norman was and at what bad health Norman was. And that this guy walking in the store with me was, Couldn't in fact, my new boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. He actually, um, all his stuff, he, he, he um, caught all his stuff in and actually um, explained to them how I was sitting in the, in the Uno, the whole Uno fool, and how we always set him a line and just to say to that guy inside that you are still amazing just to uh, go I drive know. with them in the Uno. Um, because you were, I was a big guy, so he actually said, and he told the staff all about the whole story where I always sat in the, the green Uno. So, yeah, that was quite, you couldn't believe it. I, he was like the people, helping people and just say to me, no, stand here. You mustn't go home yet. And he was talking the whole time and talking to his staff and explaining them how uh, much kilos I lost and everything. So, yeah, that was quite, quite yeah. something. Norman, tell me about your motorbike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Corvus, that is a... Like, um, years before I was, like, 297, I used to have uh, uh, big bikes. And so, yeah, when uh, I saw the scooter on, on, on Facebook, and I just had to have it, the 300 uh, scooter, not the 125. I don't think uh, 125 will still work for me. But, yeah, that is so relaxing now for me just to go. They can go with me. I go to sc The thing is, Milani, I have to go to work. Then she had to pick up my child at school after everything so now i can actually go and pick up my daughter at school with the scooter we can go to a shop we can have she have a milkshake i have a black coffee and it's just amazing how, how things have changed so normally i couldn't do this stuff for me always on milani in that time so now i can go to the shop sometimes now she's like flabbergasted because if we if I come from spa, I bought some stuff to see the specials. So she can't believe. Now I can walk in spa and go and through the aisles and, and do some shopping and be um, like what a man must do. So, yeah, for me and the scooter this morning, I drive on the N1 a little bit. It's just like freedom. You know, I was like seven years on a bed just to go outside. Sometimes when I drive, it's like tears from my eyes. Just I can't believe what actually is happening. I never thought that that would happen. And, and it's amazing at what 13 months can do, Milani. Yeah, sorry. That's, that's what I always say. You know, people are easy and quick to judge when it comes to weight loss. But there's always a story behind someone's life. So always think twice before you be, be rude to the person or leave a bad comment. You don't know what that person is going through, went through, or why the person is in a situation that they are. And I just want to say thank you to Norman for taking this opportunity, changing his life, not just for himself, but for myself and for Michaela, because he's taken so much responsibility off me that I used to have to be responsible for making sure the doors are locked at night. You know, those small things that people mm. take for granted mm. is things that, that he wished he could do. And now he yeah. can do it because he's, he's yeah. taken that He's taken that leap of faith and he's mm. he's made it. Sure. Milani, this, that's amazing. Milani, can I go to the next question? Um, do you calorie restrict uh, and do you portion control with you and Norman? Um, or how, how do you work it? Do you, um, we, we don't. I think in our situation, we do the portion control because Norman um, pre- Pre makes our um, oh. our meals, so okay. everything gets it gets weighed off. So it's a certain amount. Okay. So we're not that big on the calories. It's about 500, 500 yeah. to five hundred to fifty cal calories per meal. Yeah. Okay. So we're more on portion control that because 
I think also the portion control works for us because we used to be emotional eaters. Uh -huh. So as soon as you have, if you can eat as much as you can, then that's the problem. So you have yeah. your prep meal and you know your portions are right because that is what our problem used to be is portion control but if you do a bra and we do meat and we just put the black pepper in the salt then we don't uh, really then we eat until we have enough then we don't eat carbs or something like that with it so normally when we bry we bry like a steak or chicken yes. or something then we do don't even do any carbs and then we will eat until we have enough steak because it's not like we're doing it a lot so then we yeah. eat until we are full so it's okay. not like we are starving ourselves or else, you know, sometimes yes. for during the week, but weekends if we bry or do something, we eat until we are full. And I'm sure my stomach is a lot smaller because sometimes I put in two, three uh, chops or steak in my uh, plate and when I eat one, I'm like full. So I think it's the fat, more fat. We actually make sure there's a lot of fat on the steak or yes. when we yes, make the chicken, you know, the skin and everything. So, yeah. And I think, um, oh, sorry, I think we've also learned to say no. Um, not because you're full of nonsense, but you choose to eat something or you choose not to eat something. Yes. So there is no excuse. Like Norman said, if you go to a bride, take your own food. Nobody's going to think anything of it. Prep your own salad. You can still have a salad. You can have yeah. a green salad. Yeah. Add and, things that you like. And now that I can walk, a lot of people are actually um, trying to with, um, ask us to go with us to a takeaway or go to a restaurant to go for a bride. And I actually, I just don't go now on this stage because I don't want to put me in a situation where I will start to um, eat wrong. So maybe at maybe at a bride, I will take my bride stuff, but I won't go to a restaurant on this stage or go and have alcohol because I know myself. So... That's why on this stage, because now it's it's yeah difficult because a lot of people now that I can walk now wants me to go everywhere and go to a restaurant and go this. But when I was on the bed, I was like it was difficult. Then I was alone, so I don't want to go ever again back to on the bed. So for me, mm. I just say no. So sometimes I go alone or go out, and I will just say sorry, I don't go with. So yeah, I'm still on that. Yeah, Norman, you are hitting the nail on the head, my friend. Um, because you know, the, there's an Afrikaans saying that say, "Ter wille van, maar ten koste van." With other words, uh, for the sake of the friendship, but um, to your detriment, you know, and to your health's detriment. And at the end of the day, they will not be there if you will. Fall off the wagon. You know what that's I said? What, yeah, that's what that, happened in six years. Yes. So. yes. And, and, and I congratulate you, the both of you today for being so um, very open-minded about this. And I can hear you. Uh, you grew a lot in your uh, progress and in your thinking and in the, your philosophy, uh, your food philosophy, because... Like I always say, we all have a relationship with food. And Milani said it very well that, um, you know, sometimes people are emotional eaters. And uh, Dr. Syvis, um, it's one of the three videos that I sent to you. It's, he's a carnivore doctor, and he, he studied under Professor Tim Noakes in Cape Town. Yo. But he's a, yeah, he's a bariatric surgeon in America. And he... Um, He's a, he's a little bit older than me, but uh, he's, he's got a young family. He's got his, his boy is five years, his son is five years old, I think. And uh, he's carnivore. Yeah, he's, he was carnivore from the womb. <laughs> and uh, the, yeah, so that uh, those, those three videos that I sent you, I'll put it up on my blog. But yeah. in one of those videos, he talks about exactly... Uh, emotional eating and about stress levels and how you need to build things into your life, like like going to walk with the, your dog. He said he, he trained his dog to not allow him in the house until he, he took his dog for a walk, even if it's raining. <laughs> so, yeah. and another thing that I picked up in one of uh, in that particular video is that they would also make a, a, a prepared dinner. You know, they they basically carnivore. 100%, and then they, they would uh, dish up 
half of the the food. They won't take all the food to the table, and then they will put it on beautiful plates and they will have a, a family dinner. At, but it's 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 not enough, you know. And then if they are hungry still, they can go back to the pots. And I and I think there's there's wisdom in that, because yeah. if they are really hungry, you know, then okay after in the, and I think they have a break also also after the dinner before they go back to the uh, pots and and uh, uh, you know put the things in the fridge and, and so forth. Um, so then they do something else just to have a, um, a mental um, space, you know, not to eat for the sake of eating, you know. Yeah. So I thought that's interesting. Yeah, definitely. But it's mm. so true because it is a mental thing. It is a, a mind thing. Mm. That brings me to my next question. Um, what psychological things that you learn in these or in this journey so far, what what advice can you give to people uh, in closing? Because I think we are we're running out of time now. What what did you learn about the human psyche and about weight loss? Norman and Milani both can answer. Well, Kubis, the thing is, there's there's only a, there's always hope. That's the one thing that I I was like when I was a veteran, I thought that it's game over for me. And when we started this journey, I. I gain hope again. And the thing is that you must just keep going. I'm not like sometimes Milani said to me, it's like you are obsessed now. So that is the thing. I, I don't want to eat wrong. I don't want to do things wrong now. So in the beginning, yes, it's difficult. But when you get to that point so now that I can walk again, I don't want to go back where I was. So, yeah, that is the, the level that you must get your mind into so that you can just go and just keep going and just believe in yourself and that, you can do it. And if I can do it, I, I can't see that no, that no one else can't do it either. Because, like, I was really, there was two times that I went to hospital that Milani thought that I'm not going to come back. With sugar levels, I was almost like in a coma two times of my mm. sugar levels and uh, went to the hospital. So that's why I decided that I'm not going to see my child. I'm not going to see my wife. I'm not going to see my family. It took me six and a half years so when my first when i could walk with the walker i went to my my father and mother just to go and see them because i saw them six and a half years ago because they they are old they, they couldn't come here to cape town so yeah it took me six and a half years but i went there and it was like yeah th that is the thing that keep you pushing that's the thing that uh, yeah it was difficult times but yeah it's <laughs> making me emotional and stuff but yeah yeah. Maloney, is there anything that you want to add before we uh, close off? Um, I, I think I've said it before, but learn to, to read the labels. Make sure that what you're consuming is the correct stuff. Make sure, believe in yourself, first of all. I mean, we knew this was a last chance. We took it and it worked. And support each other. That's the biggest thing for me is the support. I mean, if I didn't have him, I don't know what. Yeah. What? Um, and that is the same one, Corbus. If if she didn't help me, if my daughter, my daughter, sometimes when I wasn't in the beginning, wanted to do exercise, my daughter would come and said, "Come, we're gonna walk now." Or, and I, I struggled to walk with the walker. When Corbus saw some of the videos on on WhatsApp, it was difficult. It was in the rain sometimes. And if I didn't have her as a support system and my daughter and family, I don't know how I would have made it without that. Because you, you, you can't. You can't do it on your own. You need the support. You need people to help you. You need just people to say, you are doing good. Just go on. And it was a difficult journey. I never thought in my whole life I would be able to last 157 point. Okay, this morning it was 158. Yeah. Because this morning I was 139 on the dot. Well, so, yeah. so 158 kilos, and people, some people are saying things that I'm lying. I have some proof on uh, some screenshots that I have of the scale that I was 269, 279, and stuff. The so, sugar, yeah, my, I've got sugar levels of 34 still. So, yeah. I've got all the proof. Yeah, I'm, yeah, so, yeah, it was quite a journey, and I want to thank Umkubus. For everything you did for me, for all the prayers you gave, 
gave me when I was wanted to give up, when I wasn't feeling good. And Wom Kubis, you don't know how much that uh, meant to me. You know, you, you were supporting me from the beginning when I started this journey. And you said to me that I can help a lot of people. I'm trying, I'm trying to, to fill your footsteps. And what you are doing for people is amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you, Norman. And thank you for your friendship, Milani, as well. And thank you um, again for this interview. This interview is going to help somebody else. And, uh, and you know, people um, will reverse their type 2 diabetes. People will prevent uh, a stroke because of you two. You must never forget that. And never stop. No, no, no uh, does not matter the pushback. You know, um, if I think of that conversation I had last night on Twitter with that vegan, he was so rude to me. You know, every paragraph that he writes, he, he, there's a rude sentence in there. And one of the sentences, even though I, t I told him your story, like I forwarded the, the uh, yeah. screen recording to you on WhatsApp, um, I told him, I'm going to have this interview with two real people. And they, um, you know, Norman lost all this uh, uh, kilograms, 158 kilos, and he reversed his type 2 diabetes. And, and I told him all of that. And he still ended up saying, yeah, but you don't know how it works on the molecular level and on, on the atom level. I say, I don't care about atoms and molecules. I care about real people. That, yeah. And you know, course, my, my blood test was done now twice. I had the EKG. The, um, my kidney function is 100%. My um, bad cholesterol is actually good. My good cholesterol is good. I'm not on cholesterol um, tablets anymore. I'm not taking actually any medication, maybe sometimes like a vitamin or something like that, but because I wasn't in the beginning walking a lot in the sun, so like uh, vitamin D and stuff. But now I don't have to take it anymore. But all my, my kidney function, my, my liver, all my... Um, organs it's like 100 percent and Wonderful. like my good cholesterol and I'm, I'm keto i'm doing high fat and still my cholesterol is like and i used to um have um cholesterol medication and not anymore so everything is just starting to get better and yes mm. and we've done it like twice we've done it like a year ago and now two three months ago again just to make sure that everything is still good fantastic one norman Maloney, thank you so much for the interview. I enjoyed it so much and this is going to change lives. I do appreciate it. Thank you, Umkova. Sorry Thank for my English. Much. I'm not I'm I'm not so good in the English, but I'm trying. <laughs> Your English is better as mine now. So, um, so footsteps for. Bye, thank you for all this, Umkobus. Thank you, my friend. I want to buy the even the manner that circle as a beef. I want you can the do. You must not try and hold it on. I will ask the Frau Frau for us on the stand to help. Bye, thank you. Thank you, Umkobus. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you for all that you have done. Bye, bye, thank you, Amol. Thank you.